Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now we've added alarm clocks. Uh, so, as I've said many times in the Facebook group that I admin for, I do not understand why Kerbal Alarm Clock is not part of the standard game. So I've gone and added it. Um, yeah, I'm sure this is like the opening of the floodgates where I'm going to start adding lots and lots of mods. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with the alarm clock. We're going to try and keep it as close to stock as possible. But yeah, anyway, so this now tells me where I'm going. Now this presents me with a little bit of an issue because my next, um, uh, what are these things called? Contracts. I'd go to explore Juna or Eve and obviously Ike's in, in orbit around Juna. Um, and this presents me with a bit of a problem because I've got 198 days to wait. And it's just like, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. So I thought what we might do uh, is not launch a Moho probe, though this is also another idea but what i thought we might do is do all these low uh low um prestige missions here the plant the flag the get the science data and all this stuff around the moon um just because that will kill some time and hopefully i don't know should we should we build a bit of an orbital base around the moon i mean this was supposed to be the uh original original idea for travel bag we we're supposed to put that up in ba up in orbit around the moon and then have um fueling points and stuff like this all up there um obviously that's not going to happen with travel bag now uh thank you to everyone that had input on on the travel bag scenario you may have noticed that i was trying to avoid the use of the claw uh, i know at least three quarters of you suggested that uh, yeah that, that was all good but i was looking for some some other sort of more now I'm going to use the term mechanical and I'm sure lots of you will complain that the claw is mechanical. I was looking for a more mechanical way of bringing it back. Some sort of like capture and return. But yeah, anyway, let's spend some science, right? Uh, I'm going to spend some science. First thing I'm going to spend some science on is these electrical bits because I need better batteries. I need, I need solar panels. I just need all sorts of good stuff. Now I believe that opens up. Yeah, good. Awesome. Um, more science. Um, now I've got 600. Gonna do funny funny noises down the microphone and buy it anyway because that needs to be done uh, is there any more ah oh, see now that five five fifty I don't have enough for that but this is why we're going to the moon right honest okay so we got 300 maybe ah oh, it'd really be nice to have 320 wouldn't it so that we could buy two of these tier ones so what I might do is buy this so I stop thinking that I can buy two and then only buy one. Right, there we go. So the real question is, what are we going to do here? Are we going to buy the mainsail, which would be ultimately good for grunt? Because, you know, grunt. Uh, the grabbing unit, which is good, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'm in two minds about the claw. I like the claw and I dislike the claw. It, uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to go into explaining why. I just, yeah, I, I like the claw and I dislike the claw. Do I buy the monoprop engines? They're good. We've got to get the pig face thing. Uh, at the same time, these tiny bits would also be incredibly useful for a lot of the things that I want to do. Uh, so, tiny bits or mainsail? Tiny bits or giant? I'm going to go with the mainsail. Boom. Done. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got... Um, uh, what are these things called? Nuclear engines. All right. So... That's that done. Let's go build ourselves um, some sort of like bits for a moon base, and we'll put that in orbit, hopefully around the moon rather than around Kerbin. In this, I mean, like we don't we don't want to do that again. All right, yeah, cool. Let, let's go have a look at our lives and see what's going on. Hi right, guys, and this is the thing that I've decided I want to put in orbit around the moon, so we can get all the science and do things awesome and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't do the re the um, I didn't record the building of it because it was a bit stop and start. I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted here. But what we've basically got is the science module in the middle because hey, that is the whole point of it. It's a science relay point. Uh, we've got monoprop top and bottom because hey, we also need to refuel. We've got ma uh, well big fuel tanks uh, top and bottom of the science because we're going to use a lander with a very small fuel capacity so this should hopefully give us about four refuels I'm aiming for uh, we have a brain down the bottom here um, and for the looks of it I've put it in a, a bit of a, uh, a cage here just to make sure everything's all alright with a, an auxiliary docking port just in case uh, I'm not really planning to use that one I want to use this one up here that's why I've put all the lights and stuff around it so we can find out what's going on uh, I also have some actual lights just in case just in case I need some lights and these are final positioning thrusters unfortunately as you just saw I didn't buy the micro rocket 
And that is what I should have bought. But you know, anyway, we'll, <laughs> I can beat myself up more off camera. Uh, and this is what we're going to put into orbit around the moon. Now, I am aware of how much this looks like travel bag. Um, and this didn't go too well last episode, uh, well, the episode before. Uh, in fact, this was the bit we had to set adrift in space. But as I am just lifting this, it should be all right. Um, now, what I'm planning to do, I think, is as with travel bags, stick some um, decouplers around the outside and maybe build some big ass rockets to go on the side. Maybe like orange tanks on both sides. That, that kind of sits well with me. I reckon we can get that around the moon like that. All right, yeah, well, I will see you on the launch pad when I... Oh, I should probably explain the name. Gleetis Klingon. Well, Klingon, we all know what a Klingon is. You know, it's something that hangs on. No, I don't know. I just went with orbit, you know, it's close enough. Uh, and then Gleeti is actually an African deity from a country that I cannot pronounce, and I'm not going to do it the disjustice of trying to pronounce it. Um, but yeah, there we go. I will see you with the launch pad. But not with the ship you thought I was going to be here with. Uh, this is... Well, this is part of the continuing saga of trying to rescue Wurgan and whatever the other guy's name is, I can never remember. Um, this is, well, we sent the cage up to rescue them last time. This time, this is Travolta Vision. Uh, literally, this is just a test to make sure that that fuel tank will feed down to the little engine underneath. And I am happy to report that, yes, it does. So that means that little setups like this are fully viable for orbital missions. Um, and surprising maneuverable. Jeb's having a whale of a time. Uh, just flying around making sure everything's all right here. Now, I showed you that, so this would have some relevance. Here we are in the same ship, plus some landing legs. I found out that was quite important. Uh, and we are closing in on the travel bag. Um, because I decided that, well, th th this vessel is not lost. We will, we will be bringing it back, but at the moment I need to earn more money and more science. But that means I need my Kerbals. So we're going to get Wurgen and... I can't remember the other guy's name. I should have looked that up before now. Uh, into Travolta Vision here. Um, and also struggle with the, the weird mechanic where if you're not quite pointed directly at that particular ladder on those sloped um, capsules, you won't hang on to it properly and go flying off northwards. Or upwards. I don't, I, I don't know. That, that direction. Um, which leads me to think that that, that, could, that could possibly be used as some sort of exploit to uh, get your Kerbals going really quick. If you could set up some sort of like ladder of, well, uh, yeah, some sort of alternating system of uh, alternate ladders, you should be able to like mash the F button and get yourself up to some sort of uh, decent velocity, right? I don't know, something worth trying at some point, maybe. Um, but yeah, we're just going to uh, cruise around in our orbit and do the, the standard stuff that brings us to this very nearly safe and competent landing. Uh, it all looks incredibly well until for some reason I mashed my C key, everything fell over and the, the fuel tank in the middle blew up. But we got our two guys back and that is the important thing. Uh, I know I only said one there, but you know, with the fuel tank blowing up, that means my ship is now in two bits. Uh, so here we come in. Um, Tried to, to get my guy out to see if we could do some science. We couldn't. Both the hatches were obstructed after that explosion. And yeah, here we go. We take the, uh, we take Wurgen and Rykan. Yep, looked up his name. And with a cry of this doesn't get into the manure orbit, I'll eat my spacesuit, we get off. Um, everything kind of went nominal here, actually. I had my, my standard, I couldn't go at full throttle, else my liquid engines would burn faster than my solid boosters issue. But, you know, once you're ready for that, that's not really an issue. You just throttle down a bit and go, ooh, I'm just going really quickly this low in the atmosphere. So, with all that in mind, what we're going to do is jump cut our way through all the stagings, because they're the interesting bits. And then when, once we're up in orbit, I think I'm going to uh, push my editing skills all the way up to uh, a massive times four there, uh, just so we can get through the nice transfers and stuff. Hopefully you will take my word that my uh, burn up into orbit all went fine and did exactly what we were supposed to do, um, to give us this weirdness that I was having with the maneuver node. Well, this isn't even with the maneuver node. I was just having uh, a terrible time trying to get my my encounter to be set up perfectly with the moon. I'd thrust a little one way and that would do nothing. I'd thrust a, a little bit the other way and that seemed to not do it. Um, I ended up setting a, a weird maneuver node that sent me up into orbit in a, in a weird orbit, really. But there we go. We, we got that right and everything's all good. So I take a moment getting these ridiculous beauty shots that I seem to like getting. Uh, including this one, which shows you everything that's going on on the, on the vessel there. That was the main point of that one. And then we make our transfer to the moon's SOI nice and simply. And despite installing the alarm clock, I didn't 
set the alarm clock for when I was down at Moon, uh, Moon Periaps uh, and completely overshot so I ended up being in one of the most awkward orbits that I could possibly imagine myself being in with the moon um, but that's all right it all got sorted out eventually at quite a great cost of um, oh, what's the stuff called Delta V but no one's going to argue about that because we got ourselves down to uh, what were we at? A couple of hundred uh, kilometres up here. Uh, this is, of course, nowhere near as tight an orbit as I would like. I mean, the moon has got no atmosphere. We could push ourselves down. Well, if we want to play it safe, 10 kilometres. If we want to be risky, a five kilometre orbit. Well, six kilometres. Five kilometres is a bit close. I think there's mountains that are five and a half kilometres on the moon. Something like that. Now, at this point, I've realised that if this is going to be uh, a really effective sort of manular base, what it really needs is to be in a, uh, a polar orbit. Unfortunately, I didn't have the spare Delta V to do that, so I just put myself in as uh, sweet, uh, sweet an equatorial orbit as I could possibly manage, and we're just going to have to make the lander do all the hard work. I mean, as that is the one with the least weight, I assume... Uh, I'm assuming it's going to have less weight than the space station, given the fact that it's going to be something quite small. But yeah, uh, whilst all that is being taken into consideration, let's let's watch these these spare bits that I brought up with me. I say spare bits; these um, interplanetary bits smash into the moon. All right, cool. And now we're going to go uh, sort out a lander. All right, guys, welcome back to the VAB, um, where we're going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to reuse a design of spaceship now. You remember where this all started, back with the travel bag, right, when we were going up to Minmus? Uh, the top of that... Oh, hello, long loading screen. Oh, I forgot this would happen. Right, there we go. The top of this was, in fact, a beautiful lander. Let's throw all that away. That I think we can repurpose quite nicely. Like, for starters, we don't, we don't need those. That's going to stay up in orbit. Um, mainly, yeah, mainly because this was such a good lander. Uh, right, now, this should probably stay there we've got more science that we need to add uh gravioli detectors now is this going to cost me because this cost this is an expensive uh, bit of equipment i've noticed it's like six grand now if i put three of them on is it going to cost me um six grand or 18 grand this this ship currently costs 13 and it's got up to 31 wow okay well i guess we'll be putting one of these on um, let's go down like that. I, I don't know whether this is something that is reusable or you just take a measurement from or what. I mean, what? You know, what, what? So, we're going to rename this first. Well, not first. We're going to rename this now. Now, this was Travel Bay. Uh, I think it's now going to be Carry Luggage. Oh, God. How do I spell luggage? Lug G A U G. Yeah. Yeah. Lug, lug Age. That's close enough. There might be an extra U in there. I don't know. Um, right. So, um, I also did a sneaky. I built this sub-assembly at, at some point. Um, and, we're, and we're just going to kind of stick that on the bottom. The main selling point of this is all the bulky stuff is on the outside. So when we get up into space, and this will probably be my inter-body um, stage... We've got a, ni a nice small engine in the middle, and this doesn't, this isn't too heavy. And all the outside, through the beauties of fuel pipes, is feeding into the middle. So we should have loads of fuel for getting up into orbit. Now I've just noticed all my staging is wrong, so I'm going to do that and see you on the launch pad, either talking live or in post. Who knows? And with barely time to catch my breath, we are off! Okay, so, launching goes relatively well as i said this is an experimental lifter where i've got like the small pods in the middle so i can be using them up high now what happened there was i was like oh i'm at 10 kilometers i should lean over but of course it was almost entirely under solid booster power so it started trying to uh, spin me out uh, and i thought all was lost here but looking at my map actually i'm all right uh, that small burst at the beginning there which happened before i was 10 kilometers in the air was enough to launch me up into a not into orbit but far enough out of the atmosphere that we can start doing this thing where i'm pushing it around now because i've got such a tiny engine on there i decided to wait till the moment of maximum efficiency right up at apple apps and then i just pushed myself into an orbit that was barely grazing the atmosphere because i wanted to take effect of uh, take advantage of the o-birth effect 
whilst traveling to the moon using the maneuver node you just saw me setting up there uh, which i think was kind of one of the most efficient routes to travel I'm, ne I'm never really sure what route i'm supposed to travel to the moon as long as i'm pointed in the right direction it's all all good right so on the dark side of the planet we decide well i decide it's time to uh, put my lights on so we can at least see what's going on and then spend oh it was a long time just kind of boosting up like this so long that i spend some time doing some screenshots checking out what's going on sorting out my apple well clicking on the apple apps to see what's going on my, my idea here was to try and get the apple apps up to 11 kilometers uh, 11 000, um yeah 11 000 kilometers but that didn't happen so i settled on a peri apps as close as possible to the moon's surface because well that's what i was trying to do anyway with the 11 million meters or whatever it is thing uh at this point i realize i've just missed uh, an eclipse and my heart broke a little bit there and then <coughs> excuse me so we make it work make our way through the soi and all the fun and frolics that that entails and i realized that i'm quite out of inclination with the orbit that i'm trying to uh, match up with so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our peri apps and um uh make an insertion burn that's just light enough to bring my apple apps just inside the, the the soi there you see that that gives me um, a real slow orbit to get out and muck around with inclination changes so i can do it with least expenditure of delta v because it's starting to get what am i down i'm down to like two uh, down to a third of my tank there um and you know i i don't want to waste all my fuel before i even get even close to the uh, the station i'm aiming for so with my inclinations matched just like that i spend a little bit of time making around making around messing around with a maneuver node uh down by my parry apps obviously my my intention here is to get a close encounter as possible um with the space station because i'd like to use this sort of the double fuel cells on the bottom there to get myself in as close as orbit as possible before i start relying on my landers fuels uh the whole idea between for the whole of today's missions in fact was to use the lander and interplanetary stages to put these two vehicles into an orbit so we're not using their fuel to get them close into the right orbit and stuff like that um uh, now i spent some time playing around with the kerbal alarm clock trying to get that closest encounter thing working i don't know how that works if anyone can can shed some light on that i know all i really have to do is go check out a wiki or something but maybe someone in the comments will help me uh, and, and then i won't have to go do that which will be great and thus begins the time of overshoot so i spend a lot of time right here nullifying my uh, my sort of target relative velocity so i can make sure that i'm i can head towards them at the right uh, in the right direction like spot on the problem is that i kind of just i don't know i wasn't really paying attention at the time and i'd end up time warping beyond and, and then i have to start slow myself down and go back again and then time warp beyond that and uh it was just um a bit of an ordeal uh, i think is the safest way to do it uh, to say it so what we're actually going to do is jump forward a little bit in time to this situation here where i drop my fuel tanks uh, so i match my match my velocities deorbited myself well deorbited my trajectory dropped my fuel tank and uh, then used the fuel on the lander to get back into uh, an appropriate orbit uh, and then i spend a little bit of time playing here now look at my uh, controls on the bottom left here no matter what i'm doing things are all kind of out of line you'll see that my pitch is uh pushing up a bit i i just i have no idea what's going on there uh, again if anyone in the comments knows could they please let me know um eventually what i had to do was just like come in go all the way out of the game and try it again you'll see here that i'd uh, i'd gone to the space center and come back out and that was no good until eventually after expenditure of a lot of time and effort but thankfully not much liquid or monoprop we uh, get to this situation where i'm just about to drift myself into docking leaving me a plenty time to say thank you very much for joining me for this dual adventure here we've stuck up a space station and we've got a lander next time if you couldn't guess we're going to go down and do some moon science and um, we're actually going to watch this bit of debris here as well yeah we're going to go down and do some moon science get some contracts sorted so i will see you then when we do that bye